two nights as well. So for me, that was a really lovely opportunity to just be with him and pray with him, over him, yeah. in the room. I didn't sleep much. It was an amazing experience, actually, because yeah. he was, you know, tethered up and sort of really conscious of him rolling and yeah, he's only his line. Two, he? yeah, Yes, and he two. needed nappy changing mm-hmm. every four hours and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I kind of resolved that I wasn't going to sleep and that was okay. I just sort of meditated on scripture and prayed and, um, yeah, filled the room up with faith. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How was it like seeing him with all the, obviously, treatment is, is quite... Unpleasant. What was that like as a, as a are you granny or nano? Nanny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How was that like as a nanny seeing? Yeah. Yeah. Fully? It's pretty confronting. Mm. But um, just back to your comment before about life after it all, in some ways it actually feels more confronting now mm. to look back at photos and mm. to remember and even reading my journal. Mm. Um, I, there are some bits where I just think, oh, I remember, you know, when the memory comes back, it's just like, oh, that was just the worst, mm. <laughs> the worst. There was one night, I think he'd had his fourth lot of chemo, and uh, so there's kind of this cumulative effect in him. Mm. and Getting weaker. And yeah, yeah, and... Up until then, he hadn't vomited a lot, but on this particular night when I was looking after him, he uh, he vomited and um, and then he seemed to vomit every hour. And he was trying; he was asleep. But I I remember jumping up out of the bed to hold him. I didn't want him to aspirate anything, so I was holding him on his tummy, but thinking if he gets this on his sleep suit we've made these sleep suits for oh, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. if he gets that on him we haven't got another spare and i'm hitting the buzzer like because come and change the sheets please he's getting really distressed about the vomiting it's just like when i remembered it i'm, I'm happy now i can say it without it affecting me too much now but i had a memory of that about a month ago and it was just like oh Mm-hmm. In fact, I think after the third vomit, I messaged Anne and Andrew because I was very cautious about, you know, in situations like that, medical people approach you and say, would you like to do this or that? And I'm thinking, I don't want to be the decision maker here. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. we. This is new territory. We haven't been here before. Mummy and Daddy need to mm-hmm. make the decisions about what happens next. Mm-hmm. So I messaged them and Andrew actually came in and took over. I mean, I would have stayed, but... Mm. Was that something you were... That was something that you were mindful of the whole time, was the, the role of, of Nana and, and you know, the, the, them making the decisions? Is that something Yeah, you... it was actually, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think, you know, when I would take over from them, you mm-hmm. know, and come in, I would, you know, I would be very strategic about, so mm. where are we up to? Like, what meds has he had? You know, just mm. trying to just clarify where we're up to and, and what do you want to happen next what, mm, do you, what mm. are you looking out for and uh yeah just being really clear that I was um following their lead really mm. but I guess I did I did discover one time Anna it sort of gave me a bit of a <laughs> it's inevitable really where you kind of hit hit head sometimes I um I tended to ask a lot more questions, mm. like why why are you giving him that? Mm. You know, um, why hasn't he had that other one that's meant to be every four hours? And I, there was a couple of times when I asked questions when she was there, and she, I don't know, I thought she just, I think she just thought I was being too something or other. Uh, anyway, yeah. So, but I just said, well, you know. We had a really good conversation afterwards, actually, which was, well, came to us agreeing that I was one of three mm. who were looking after him. So I'm invested in this. Mm. I need to know this for Did myself. Did you both get a chance to put yeah. your point of view? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. She understood that. She, it was good. I didn't... Yeah, we, I think we had sort of been acting a bit unconsciously about that stuff, but mm. after that conversation... So how far through the treatment was that, though? Roughly, you know, like... Mm, um, probably the third lot of chemo or something. Mm-hmm. Second or third. Mm-hmm. It was pretty brief, but it just... 
it just made me realize, okay, so I am following your lead, but I need to know stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really invested here. Mm -hmm. I'm not simply, I'm, I guess I'm not simply taking the lead. There's, there's mostly that, but I've got a view here on what should happen. Mm -hmm. I know there were some times when uh, there was a suggestion he could go home mm -hmm. and after chemo, and I'm like, I was cautious about that and just mm -hmm. sort of felt like, well, is he stable enough? You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, what happens if you, because, particularly because he hated having his port accessed, mm -hmm. and if they deaccessed it, go home, and then suddenly he's unwell again. That's another trauma he's got to have. Mm -hmm. And I was. Is he one of those screaming really loudly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a terrible sound. It's I don't a, think if you've ever heard that sound, if, if he's one of the worst sounds in the world, I think that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, Screams of anger. And Anna had sort of mentioned up, because I was interested in what you're saying that the children actually longitudinally seem to do so well because some of the stories she was saying to me that she was reading was that, you know, children uh, show evidence of sort of trauma for mm -hmm. years beyond, you know, particularly mm -hmm. around these kind of interventions. So I didn't want him to have any more of those than he needed to. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess it was a time when I wasn't super confident of their capacity to look after him when they got home. Mm -hmm. You know, and what was that? Is that? Um, well, I remember asking Anna, uh, you know, those questions around what what meds is he on and how often are they happening, knowing that you know, when you're in hospital, that's largely done for you, mm -hmm. even though I was pretty vigilant about that. Mm -hmm. But when you get home, you're the one doing that. Yeah, yeah, the and you're giving it orally, and mm -hmm. he doesn't like that. And, Not you know, to your orgasm. No, no. So I remember asking her, and her just kind of going, don't ask me all the details. I can't remember all these details. And I was like, this is really important details. I didn't say that to her, but... What emerged out of that was that we got a big whiteboard. I, I think I said to her, we're sharing the care of him. You can't be holding it all in your head. And this is just sort of, I guess, an experience that I know from parents of kids with disabilities yep, that, yep, I, yep, that yep, I work that with. Yeah, yeah. They, they can think of an absolute bottleneck because they know so much about their kid. And unless it's available to everyone else, mm. nobody else can really take yeah, care yeah. of their mm. kid. Mm. So I said, what if we, we get it out of you? We, we put it on a whiteboard, and then whoever is coming in here at home can see where we're up to. Mm. And, yeah, I just I think I tend to be a bit more of a, a detailed person. She's a big picture person. Mm. Mm. And so, you know, I was thinking... with, And I'm also kind of pretty compliant, you know, if someone yeah. says you've got to do a mouthwash every four hours and you've got to put this gum stuff on, uh, and he doesn't like it, but too bad, too sad, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we need to do this. Whereas she was like, at times, oh, he really doesn't like it, yeah, don't worry about it. Mm -mm. You think that's easier as a nano with that? With her saying that? No, with, you know, you being eldest, we have to do that, do you think that's more a personality thing, or just being a nano gives you that ability to kind of see the big picture sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yes, you know, I, I was, you know, he's, you know, he's the most adorable child, um, but it is different as an Anna. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard to put words on, but um, even now, like last week, he he developed an infection, and uh, I think for Anna, the you know, it's just like oh. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. she's only sort of just into the post-cancer yeah, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was really hard to sort of work out what was going on. He didn't have a runny nose or a cough or rash or anything, but his temperature was just high and mm -hmm. barely managed with Panadol. And uh, I think probably uh, because of my experience as a parent, it was easier to sort of go statistically, kids get infections, his immunity is low, yeah, sure. It, it, it got to a point where uh, I think after 48 hours, she said, "What do you think we should do?" I said, "I, th I think it's time to go to ED," mm -hmm. and um, and they did, and he's ended up being admitted and stayed overnight. But as a mum, I think I was able to, as a grandmum, and because of my experience as a mum, I think I was able to sort of go most childhood infections resolve themselves. You can't 
You can't take your eyes off the